You know, corporatism is extractive and central currency is growth-based. If those are the two, really the only forces, the only institutions that are allowed to survive by law in our economy, what kind of economy are we gonna have? One that's extractive and based on growth. And if you live like that for four or 500 years, you're gonna think that's just the way the economy works. And so the most successful companies in an economy like that are these Walmart-like companies, which act pretty much like British East India Trading Company. You go to a region, you undersell every local merchant, you become the only possible employer, then you pay everybody welfare-dependent welfare wages, suck all the value out of the place, and then move on to the next. Now the problem with this, as Deloitte, a real finance company or finance institution figured out, was that for the past 75 years, as a result of this extractive growth-based mentality, corporate profit over corporate size has been going down. So even in this age, in this internet age, corporate profit over corporate size has been going down. What does that mean? It means corporations are really good at sucking all the money out of a system, all the value out of a system, but they're really bad at deploying it once they have it. It's a kind of financial obesity where they store what had been circulating value, they store it in fat, but can't do anything with it. And this is a problem for them. They understand this is a problem for them, that they're growing. So growth is actually their problem, not their goal. Growth is bad for them, not just for us. But what do they do? They get the digital, disruptive digital technologies, and what do they do? They do the same model, but on steroids. So Uber is basically Walmart on digital steroids. So instead of it taking 20 years to bankrupt a marketplace, it takes two years. <laughs> the digital economy is not revolutionary in that sense. You have to understand the digital economy as reactionary. It's conservative. It's attempting to conserve Renaissance-era economic innovations. You know, laws that were written by people who have long since left the building and who are writing it for priorities that we don't even remember. But now, instead of doing it through law, we do it through code. So we don't even need to have uh, government and corporations in, in cahoots. So what do we do instead? What I think we should do instead is use our digital technologies, as such as we have, or use our business plans to optimize not for growth, of capital, but for the velocity of money and the generation of value. But the velocity of money is the opposite of the extraction of value, and the generation of value is the, is, is, is the opposite of growth. How do we do that? Well, there's a ton of ways to do that. Local currencies. If you have people with needs and people with skills, you don't need a bank to come, lend money to a factory, to, or lend money to a corporation to build a factory to give people jobs. You don't need jobs. All you need is the exchange of goods and services between people. You know, in America, we are tearing down houses as we speak because there's houses in foreclosure. We're tearing them down because if we don't, then market prices will go down. We can't just let people live in those houses. Why? Because they don't have jobs. So now we have to invent stupid pieces of plastic, stupid products that people don't need so that those people can go make them for us. We have to dispose of more things. We've got to dispose of razor blades, dispose of bottles, dispose of stuff so that we can give those people jobs. If you and I share a lawnmower, if everyone on the block shares a lawnmower, that's bad for the economy. This is a problem. It's only bad for the economy if we have an economy that has to grow. We only need an economy that has to grow if our economy exists to pay back bankers who haven't worked in two millennia. The other way to think about it, and this is so hard for businesses, is make other people rich. If a business makes its customers rich, that's not a bad thing, that's a good thing. Why? Because now you've got wealthy customers. If a business makes its partners rich, its suppliers rich, if it's making everyone else rich, then what is it doing? It's creating a more fertile soil for its own business activity. If a business goes in with a mindset of extraction, wanting to, oh no, they're still making money. My customer can still survive at this price, so I'm gonna raise it. My employee can still survive at this le level of wages, so I'm gonna lower it. 
Right? That all makes sense in a short-term growth-based extractive economic business model. It doesn't make sense if you think of your business like a family business, as something that you want to be around when your children are around, as something that you don't want your kids to be ashamed of later. It's, it's that short-termism that has actually the CEOs get this. And I've been with CEOs who have wept with me privately in their offices because they understand that they are cannibalizing their own companies in order to show growth to shareholders at the expense of the company. So, that, well, I'm going to have to leave in 18 months because they understand that's when the, the jig is up. The other thing is to think about what does it mean to live in a lending economy? I mean, I don't know if any of you are bankers, but the role of banks in a circulatory economy would not just be to exploit their monopoly on capital, but to think, how can I facilitate lending within this community? If a pizzeria wants a hundred thousand dollars to expand the restaurant, don't give them a hundred thousand dollar loan they have to pay back. Give them fifty thousand dollars contingent on their ability to raise fifty thousand dollars from the community. And how could they do that? Well, there's a lot of ways we can talk. You know, the, the object of the game here is, well, it's, it's, it's complicated, but the object of the game is to understand that at least so far, technology has not been disruptive to the economy. Technology has been uh, steroidal. Technology has simply amplified the economy that we're already in. Right? We have the opportunity instead, instead of living in this reactionary way. You know, the, the, the idea would be not to use technology to continue optimizing human beings for the market as we know it, but to use technology to, mark, to, to optimize the market for human beings as we want to live.